In DaVinci Resolve 18.1, Blackmagic Design added an incredible new feature, especially for people like me who make presets and templates for Resolve. But it was also kind of broken. However, in this latest update for Resolve, DaVinci Resolve 18.1.2, they fixed it but uh, they didn't really tell anyone. <laughs> the primary purpose of this release was to upgrade uh, the firmware for the speed editor um, for DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. But when you go to download, it just says that and then a general performance and stability improvements. However, and this is a little pro tip for you if you are not aware, if you head over to the Blackmagic Design uh, forums, they always have a uh, post with the latest release and sometimes it goes a little bit more in depth on what has been updated. And you can see here are some of those miscellaneous performance increases and stuff like that. But we also have addressed an issue when trimming comps with background media. That's what we want. This video is going to be a follow-up slash uh, maybe remaster um, of a previous video where we walked through the entire process of how you can create a drag and drop magnify effect for the edit page inside Fusion all on your own. In that previous version, we created that preset to be an effect you can drag right on a clip. But with this fix, we are now going to create a generator for Resolve, something that you can drag right to a timeline. It lives on its own clip. It makes it much easier to retime it and uh, affect multiple clips at once without needing to use something like an adjustment layer. We're also gonna go about a building the effect in a slightly different way so even if you watch that video there should be some uh, new cool stuff in fusion for you here and just like the last version this is an incredible place to start um, if you want to get going building your own presets and plugins for resolve that you can use to speed up your workflow you can share them with others or you could even sell them so let's get started so we're here in DaVinci Resolve on the edit page, I have this gameplay clip, and this is the effect we are going to uh, recreate again today. This really cool magnifier effect, this box pops up, um, it holds, and then when the effect is done, it zoop, zooms back out. And this effect is really cool. You can see it is on this own track, so it will apply to as many different video clips as you have beneath it, if you have you know uh, uh, multiple clips in frame or something like that, and you can extend that, and it will then hold for as long as you drag that out to be making timing like really, really easy. Um, and then you can open your inspector or come over to this fusion overlay to drag this anywhere else in frame. And it like uh, changes the zoom around. Let me get, yeah, it pivots that zoom around. So exactly uh, what you are over at any uh, given moment is like perfectly zoomed in on. It's pretty cool. You even have this option to you know, round it out to a circle. Great. So that's what we're gonna make. And we're gonna start by deleting that. So we just have our footage. And in the effects library, we're coming to effects, fusion composition. I am dropping that right on my timeline. And if we preview it, it's black. Oh no. But you can inspect that and then just click this button to open the fusion page. And uh, wow, we are in the fusion page. And the only thing we have right here is this media out. Anything we do in fusion will get plugged into that, sent back to the edit page. And the first thing we're going to do is create a media in node. And it's probably pretty rare that you have created one of these uh, just like any other node. If you drag a clip from your media pool, it will create a media in node. If you select a clip on a timeline and then enter the fusion page, it will create a media in node. But right now, if I preview this, uh, there is nothing to preview. This media node is not connected to anything. But new in Resolve 18.1, I can come to this media source and change that to background. And wow, it pulls in that video clip. And just to demonstrate, if I were to come in, uh, drag this up to video clip Three, if I were to grab something like a generator, just a solid color generator, uh, I came in here, uh, I will disable that fusion clip, come into my color generator, make that this green, cool, and then hop back to settings, and then, you know, just crop that in a bit. So now, hey, we have our video clip and this green square in the middle. If I hop back into that fusion clip and look at that media in, hey, whatever you do to everything beneath that fusion effect uh, that is using this background media source, that will be brought into fusion. Uh, but, uh, you know, I don't want a green square in my scene, so we can go back, hop back into fusion. And if I just connect that media in to the media out, um, it, yeah, well, it had that one scene cached. Uh, now, this will be a, a little confusing at first. If I go back to the edit page, um, it'll look like absolutely nothing is happening. But if I go back into Fusion and between that media in one and two, I add something, say like a color corrector, and I just come in here and pull down saturation, then now you'll see it'll be the video clip. As soon as it gets that Fusion clip, it'll go black and white. And as soon as it's done, it will go back to color. Now, while this was introduced in 18.1, there was a small bug where if you then extended this effect, um, it would cut to a black screen if you extended it further past that five second default. But hey, it's fixed now. Um, this works like you would assume it would. But now we can hop uh, back into the Fusion page and build our cool effect. 
All in all, this is a pretty simple effect, but there is tons of cool stuff built on each other and on the systems infusion to make it work. First, we need a box. And unlike the last video, I'm actually going to uh, make our box and mask this time in the shape system. So I'm gonna start with just an S render node. If I preview this, you will see nothing. But if we create an S rectangle node, uh, pipe that into our S render, first you won't see anything this is just sort of a quirk of the shape system if you uh nudge any of these controls it will work see if i pull down this border width boom now we got a square i can undo that we are back to uh, where the square defines i'm gonna pull down this width and height just a little bit maybe maybe 0.3 yeah that's a good looking square maybe hey 0.2 Point two. Yeah, we'll keep it there for now. So now let's start with the basic. We have this square and we're actually gonna use this as a mask. Coming out of this media node, I'm going to add a transform node. And if I preview that, you can see, hey, nothing changed by default. We haven't changed any settings. If I pull up this size, it zooms in on the entire image. But if I take this S render node, this square, and connect it to the blue input of this transform node, it masks the effect. So if I go back to that transform, previewing that by pressing two, if I pull up the size, you'll notice it is only uh, showing that zoom within the area of this box. If I pull up that S render on one and click this button, so we have two viewers, you see what is actually happening. That square is in the middle, so it is only applying that zoom inside that square. And if I come back to this S rectangle and move this around, you see it is moving the area where that is applied. Now, there is a one other pretty nifty trick that makes this effect work, and that has to do with the uh, pivot on this transform of the zoom. In the previous version, we weren't using the shape system, so this particular part was a little more straightforward, but all you need to know here is that on this S rectangle node, uh, we are not going to use this X and Y offset uh, to change this transform pivot, instead, after this S render node, we are going to create another transform and this gives us new uh, center controls for that square. So I can come to this transform for our footage. I'm going to right click on pivot, go to expression and on this transform two, I'm going to pin this so I can come back to transform one where we have that expression and I'm going to click and hold this uh, plus icon to get this little pick whip go to that center parameter on transform two that is moving that box, let go. And now I will uh, preview that box here as well because I will disable this very quickly. If I click on that S rectangle and I move that around, say I want to zoom in on this map. If I just move that box, uh-oh, I moved the zoom over the map, but now the entire image is scaled, remember? So now the map is actually like way down here or something. But if I have this transform after the S render, I have that turned on. Remember, we uh, parented the pivot of that transform to the position of this box location. So now if I move the box location, it perfectly syncs up. If I click this transform, you will see uh, the boundary box for this overall. I'll actually select both of them. It might be a little hard to see, but you can see this big green circle around the entire image. That is the boundary of our footage after it is scaled up by this transform. And what that pivot is doing is that it is shifting it around. So when we move that square, it's actually moving the entirety of that footage, but it just perfectly lines up so that if we wanna look at our ammo, it works at this uh, ammo counter up here, or our grenades, or our health bar, anything. It is perfectly zoomed in on the area we are looking at. It's pretty cool. So this is already really cool, uh, but there's one, I think, sort of main other element in this effect, um, and that is the optional outline. It can be pretty hard to tell exactly like where this square is in your scene, uh, but with an outline, it's really nice. And again, this is one step that is a little bit more complicated because we are using this uh, shape system, but I think it's worth it and, and good practice for some of the cool, cool power um, that you can use in other places with the shape system. So we are going to create a, a background node we are going to make that all white. And then what we are going to do, coming out of this rectangle, uh, I'm going to click off of that and then type in a S outline. I will click that, connect the rectangle, and then I'm going to create a second S render node and connect that S outline to that. I will bring them over here. If I preview that over here, um, again, you might need to bump some of those settings. Boom, just like that. Hey, we have this nice square outline. You even have the options for like border style, whether you want it to be 
uh, rounded a little bit or like square and pointy and the thickness of that as well. And uh, I think actually I want these after the fact. I will connect that S render to this background node. And then here I'm gonna do uh, something I, I did previously on the other version, but to a little different effect. I'm gonna take this transform two. Remember that's the transform that is controlling the placement of the square. I'm gonna copy that, control C, and then I'm going to control shift V and paste an instance node. We talk a lot about instance nodes uh, on this channel. We can do lots of cool stuff with them. We talk about how powerful it is to uh, de-instance some parameters. We're not gonna do that here. Here, we are pretty much just using this as a, a linked node that has uh, perfectly copied parameters uh, on one version to another. So if I connect the background node to that and just preview that instance transform, you'll see that moves the square around. And if I ever moved it down to this bottom right hand corner, uh, if I preview that other transform, it also moves the solid square down there. So uh, I will keep that connected. And if I take the output of this instance node, connect it to the output of this uh, master zoom transform, it will just merge that after the fact. And if I preview that, boom, we got a square with an outline that zooms in. And just with that one transform control, if you move this center around, both of them work great. You can change, of course, all the controls uh, on this outline to change how thick it is or the color, all of that. You can bring it back to center. It looks, it looks really cool. This is the effect. However, it is missing um, one very crucial part, the animation. And that animation uh, will happen right on this one S rectangle node. We do have separate width and height parameters here um, instead of just a size parameter, but I'm pretty sure I'm actually gonna link these together. Uh, and I'm gonna do that by demonstrating uh, something uh, pretty cool. Uh, but first on that width, I'm gonna right click and go to modify with anim curves. We love anim curves, we love anim curves. And remember uh, that value we are ending at is 0.2. You'll notice it set that little keyframe and if we hop over to modifiers, here we have anim curves. There's a whole lot here. I've been saying for ages, I'm gonna go in depth on anim curves. I will sometime. <laughs> but for this example, I'm gonna set this to duration. I'm going to set this curve to custom uh, and I'm going to check mirror here. So what this means, if I preview, uh, it will start at this at a value of zero. This offset is where the value it is starting at and it will go to a value of one based on this scale. And then because I have it mirrored, um, it should hit one at exactly halfway and then go back to zero. You see, uh, I'm gonna zooming up, 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 it hits one and then comes down, it mirrors all the way down. But we don't want it to have this continuous motion. We want it to uh, zoom to full pretty quick. And we can actually accomplish that um, using this custom curve. I'm gonna uh, select the keyframes here, click F to flatten those, get ourselves a little bit of easing. And then I'm actually gonna select the second keyframe, um, click and hold shift on that, and just slide this over to the left quite a bit. So if this easing window is supposed to represent um, the entirety or it, because we have it mirrored half of this time, we can see it completes that move pretty quick and then just holds there. So uh, you'll see if we play, it zoom, zooms to full. It's a little hard to uh, watch this live. You'll see here it zooms to full, uh, holds, and then it holds an equivalent time and then only comes back at the very end of our scene. That's what we want. But of course, we don't want this to fill the entire frame. Uh, and that comes back to the scale. If I then uh, paste in that point two we had earlier or just type it in, um, it will only scale up to that point two value. And what's really great about this is that we can publish this scale control so that users can have access to this on the edit page to uh, change uh, how much it zooms up after the fact. Okay, we have this animation on width done. And we could go through that process of doing it all um, to height as well, or because this is on a published modifier, we can go back to tools, just right click on height and go to connect to anim curves on width value. And now those are executing that move at the same time. That one anim curves is driving the value for both width and height. And if I were to go into anim curves and pull up the scale, the box would be larger. So we have a finished effect, but we are not done yet. Now we need to package this up and get it to somewhere we can use on the edit page. And before I actually go through that process, I'm gonna take a little bit of a stock of where we're at because I need to think about what controls uh, in this composition I want the user on the edit page to have access to. We know that on this rectangle and more specifically on this anim curves, we have this scale. On this outline, we have that thickness and border style. We want the color of the outline, so the background color as well. And then I believe uh, we just have this transform two center for the position of the square. And then on this transform one, that is the main size control we want here. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna select all of these nodes, including the media in, but not the media out, right click, 
and go to macro, create macro. That gives us this like wild menu here. I'm gonna just rename this something like cool magnify. And then now if I uh, close this, you'll see we have an entry here for each uh, node in our scene and also each modifier. So anim curves, even though that was on the S rectangle node, uh, anim curves exist on its own. So let's go through S rectangle one. Ooh, I did forget. Uh, we want corner radius on that where we can make this a circle or a square. Uh, sure. Let's go ahead and toss angle in there. I believe um, that should work, right? Actually, just because let's leave that for now. Uh, if we want angle, we'll add that on transform two. I can close that AM curves one. We want scale. And you can click in here to rename this to something. So I can rename this like size. Whoops, I don't need that to be all caps. Size, transform two. We want center. And here I'll toss on angle there as well. We have background one, which I will come down to... Oh, I will actually close image, go to color, and I'm going to select all of these, this first top left uh, color group. So I'll do red, green, blue, and alpha two. And uh, where it says color, I will call this outline color, and I will actually spell it correctly. After that, we don't need the instance node or the S render. Uh, the outline, we do want thickness and border style, we said. And then transform one, we want zoom here that will just be that x size so we can just rename this zoom again doesn't need to be all caps and if i close that uh yeah we just have the media in which we don't want to change oh uh, this is like left and right I believe those are audio channels which we don't need to worry about and then i'm going to file save as group you can save this uh, just anywhere you have quick access to i have a presets test folder here i will save that and then i will close i will open my effects library in fusion open up fusion edit and then generators. Now you can uh, click generators and then there are a few different things you can do. You can click these three dots and go to show folder. That will take you a location where you should be able to uh, copy that file over or uh, it should also work, I believe, if I pull up this test folder here, I have cool magnify. If I have that generators or any subfolder, you see I can click test to where I have a whole bunch of stuff I've tested. I can drag this new cool magnify text right into uh, this sort of window for that let go. Uh, Resolve will think for a second uh, if it will let you scroll. That's a pretty good indicator. Or it might actually kick you back to uh, a, a folder out here somewhere. It's thinking. It's doing its thing. There we are. Uh, we are back. And then now, um, sometimes it needs a restart. We'll see. If I go back to the edit page, uh, move this fusion composition out of the way. If I go to my effects library, generators, test, scroll... I see, hey, at the top, cool magnify. I can drop that right on any track and boom, we've got our square. We start playing. The square comes on fine. Square zoom, zooms out fine. And if I click that uh, in my inspector, come to generator. I have all those controls I gave. So something like uh, if I pull down the thickness of this outline, it'll get a little thinner. I can always change the border style of that as well. Change the outline color and the angle works too. move this around anywhere you want in scene. Change the size of this, the corner radius if you want it to be a circle. And yeah, it just works. And you just made it yourself if you've been following along. <laughs> I know this is a relatively simple effect, but so much of what I've just showed off are the building blocks of really, really cool and powerful stuff. And because I didn't say it at the beginning, uh, if you don't know, I also have a version of this effect which you can just download if you didn't want to follow along. A link to that will be in the description. I don't believe I updated it for the last version, uh, even though I, I think I have an update ready to go. Either way, check that link if this is just an effect you like and just want to download. But I know for some people, this will absolutely be the spark to start making your own edit page presets and plugins. Even if you only use them yourself, you can create something that saves you a lot of time if it's an effect that you're using over and over in multiple videos. And now this has even more functionality uh, with this new ability to have this uh, live uh, on its own spot on a timeline. Again, increase that duration. It still just works. I think it's very cool, very exciting. Hopefully you do too. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.